Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Hello everyone, how are you today? Hopefully you are all in a good condition Welcome back to Tablet Class Teaching English as Foreign Language with me Yasinta Wandari Today we will focus on a topic about teaching productive skills, speaking and writing Then what we are going to do today Let's see the learning objective of today's discussion. We have three learning objectives for today's discussion. The first is explain principles teaching productive skills, that is speaking and writing. The second, explaining the principles of micro skills and speaking and writing. And then the third is explaining speaking and writing performances in the classroom. Let's go to the concept of productive skills. Yeah, productive skills is the product of the language. It is speaking and writing that involve language production, so they are regarded as productive skills. According to Hornby in Adrian 2020, states that speaking is making use of words in an ordinary voice, offering words knowing and being able to use a language expressing oneself in a word and making speech while writing according to Anjayani is the activity of making a recording language in a piece of paper of any other areas to express the idea and message from the writer including the usage of vocabulary and structure of the language <coughs> there are several principles both in teaching speaking and writing but now we are going to focus on the principles in teaching and speaking first there are several principles that is mentioned by Brown 2001 the first is use the techniques that cover the spectrum of learner needs from language-based focus on accuracy to message-based focus on interaction meaning and fluency the second principle is provide intrinsically motivating techniques it's very important since speaking is not an easy way to students to speak so as a teacher we should provide several motivations that can help students to gain the confidence to speak and then the third is encourage the use of authentic language in meaningful contexts. we need to have the meaningful context to help the students relate to the academic purpose to the real life language use and then the fourth is provide appropriate feedback and correction feedback and correction is really important for students to help them improve their ability in speaking through a good feedback and correction students are able to look at themselves to improve their ability to speak <coughs> the next one is capitalize on the natural link between speaking and listening as we know speaking is one of the spoken language as well as the listening so listening and speaking actually cannot be separate each other so when we want to focus on speaking we cannot leave the listening skill to the conversations so it is better for the students to have speaking and listening skills in one activity and then the next one is give students opportunities to initiate oral communications it is very helpful for teacher to know the students understanding how to speak in English by giving them opportunities to start the communication even though they lack of several language elements and then the next one is encourage the development of speaking strategies there are several speaking strategies that can be used and then the teacher should encourage the students to speak in English and then the next one is the principle in teaching writing Tang 2006 propose several principles in teaching writing the first is raise the students awareness it is needed for students to know that writing is a complex process but the students can be directed 
to have awareness that writing is not so difficult task to do. They only need to follow the instruction in a writing process. And then the next one is help students to analyze their own ideas. It is very important for students to know how to organize their ideas since it is the basic difficulties that can, that can face by the students. Organizing ideas may be difficult for several students because they are not accustomed to organize ideas in order. And then the third is with to write. As we know that writing is a productive skill, but when we produce something, we need input, we need something to product. So to have a good writing, it is supposed for students to get input from reading. By reading several texts, they will get input to write. Now the next one is teach process writing. As we know that writing is divided into two kinds. The first is product writing and the second is process writing. It's important to introduce the students about the process writing because in process writing, students are introduced to how in writing correctly rather than to focus on the product. And then the last one is create a learner-centered classroom in an active communication. The next one is about micro skills in speaking. Brown in 2001 mentioned there are several micro skills that can be done in speaking. The first is produce chunks of language in different lengths. You know that in English, in other language, there are several different lengths of language, like a phrase, and then close, and sentences. It is important for students to be able to produce chunks of language in different lengths so they will understand how to use the chunks of the language correctly. And then the second is to produce English stress pattern. We know that in speaking, stress pattern can affect the meaning. So we have to introduce the students to produce the English stress patterns correctly. And then the third one is use an adequate number of words to accomplish purpose. So when we are going to speak our uh, opinion, we use several words that can accomplish our purpose in speaking. The next one is monitor oral production and use strategic devices. For example, pauses, correction, backtracking to enhance the clarity of the message. The next one is use grammatical word classes, for example, nouns and verbs. We also have to use the system, for example, agreements and pluralizations. We also have the word order, patterns, rules, and elliptical forms that functions differently. Then the next one is use cohesive devices. If we speak without any cohesive devices, the text that we speak cannot be spoken fluently. So we have to be able to use the cohesive devices to make our speaking more naturally and fluently. And the next one is accomplish appropriately communicative functions according to the situation, participants, and goals. We speak in different function. When we are going to speak in a formal situation, we will have to use a different kinds of language. But when we want to speak to our friends, we also need to use the other form of language. Then the last one is use appropriate register and conventions in conversations. We know that language have different registers according to the area that they use. Okay, the next one is about micro skill in writing. There are several micro skills that can be applied in writing. The first is produce an acceptable core of words and use appropriate word order patterns. There are many language structures can be used in a language, but it's important for students to know the basic 
and the appropriate word order patterns that can be used in their daily communication, especially in written form. And then the second is use acceptable grammatical systems. Even though in English there are several forms of language related to the development of language itself, the students should be able to differentiate the difference of the grammatical system according to the purpose of the writing form. And then the next is use cohesive devices in written discourse like using the conjunctions and the signal of times and etc. The next one is use the rhetorical forms and conventions of written discourse. And then the next one is appropriately accomplish the communicative function of written text according to form and purposes. As we know, English has several genres and different genres have different purposes and also have different general structures. So it's important for students to know the type of the text and its purpose to adapt with their goals or the purpose of the writing. And the next one is convey links and connection between events and communicate relations such as mind idea, supporting details, new and given information, generalization and exemplifications. And the last one, distinguish between literal and implied meanings. Now we are going to talk about the performances of productive skills. The first, we are going to talk about speaking performances in a classroom. There are several speaking performances. The first is imitative. This technique focuses on some particular elements of language form. The example of this is drilling. To some extent, drilling is good as it helps learners to establish psychomotor patterns or to lose the tongue. So by drilling, students can train their pronunciation to make their pronunciation more fluent. And then the second one is intensive. This performance is intended to attempt some phonological or grammatical aspects of the language. So in this type of speaking performance, students not only use the speaking ability or use the language, but also they will know the phonological or grammatical aspects of the language itself. The next one is responsive. In this type of performance, the example of this is short reply to teacher or student initiated questions. So here, there will be a communications answering questions between teacher to students or students to students. And then the next one is transactional or dialogue. The purpose of the transactional dialogue is to convey or exchange specific information, for example, in a conversation. So here, students can exchange information based on the information that they are looking for. And then the other speaking performance are interpersonal or dialogue. The purpose of this performance is to maintain social relationship. This type of dialogue is rather tricky as it may convey aspects such as casual register, colloquial language, slang, ellipses, and sarcasm which belongs to advanced knowledge. And then the next one is extensive or monologue. The monologue can be plain or impromptu. Teacher may ask students to perform monologue in the form of oral reports, summaries, or short speeches. And then we go to the writing performances in the classroom. We are going to talk about imitative first or writing down. So at the beginning level, students will simply write down English letters, words, and sentences. The imitative can be done through dictation. In this step, teacher can read a short paragraph at normal speed. And then during the pauses, students write exactly what they hear. And then the next one is intensive or controlled. The a common form of controlled writing is to present a paragraph to students in which they have to alter a given structure throughout. For example, 
students are asked to change all the present tense verbs of a text into past tense that they need to adjust the other element to be a good paragraph. The next one is self-writing. Diary or journal writing is a part of self-writing in which students write about thoughts, feelings, or even in books. And then the next one is display writing. It is part of the school curricular context in form of short answer exercises, exa examinations, and research reports. And then the last type of writing performance is real writing, in which in real writing, there are three types of it. The first is academic, the second is vocational or technical, and the last one is personal. In academic real writing, students are provided with several activities such as group problem solving tasks, peer editing, in which the students may exchange new information with each other and with the instructor. The purpose of this kind of performances is to deepen the students about the language features in writing form. Then the next is vocational or technical. Writing activity can be brought for advancements in certain occupations, for example, real letters, forms that are used in companies and corporations. And then the last one is personal. The task can be in form of writing diaries, letters, postcards, notes, personal messages, and other informal writing that can be done by the students itself. Now, we come to the summary of today's discussion. So, in teaching productive skills, teachers should provide more activities that encourage students to explore and produce English language more. Then, the activities can be varied depending on the level of students and the purpose of the learning. And then, the last, teacher is also needs to introduce the micro skills of speaking and writing in order to help students improve their ability in productive skills. I have already provided several references that you can use to deepen your language. You can read it by yourself. And then we go to exercise. I have provided just three exercises for you to deepen your knowledge about how to teach productive skills, especially in speaking and writing. I think that's all for today's discussion. Hopefully that you can understand all the material that I have already delivered. And then we'll see you in our next video. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.